Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the Java iterable interface, and we'll talk about what sort of things that allows us to do with collections. So the purpose of the iterable interface is that it allows us to get an iterator of the elements of a collection whenever we request it. And if you'll remember, an iterator is just an object that contains the elements of a collection that allows us to go through the collection without needing to know anything about that underlying data structure. We don't need to know if it's a linked collection, if the collection is stored in an array or whatever. By using the iterator, we know that we're able to go through the collection element by element. So the iterable interface has three methods in it, iterator, for each, and split iterator. And we're actually going to be focused more on the iterator method. Don't worry about the other methods for now. If you're interested in those, there's really good documentation out there for those. So the iterator method returns an iterator of some generic type. And it's generic there because we don't know what type of elements are stored in the collection beforehand. So by making it a generic type, we can ensure that whatever type is in there, this iterator can handle it. So let's assume we have a collection called my collection that's of some type that implements the iterator interface. So that means we can get an iterator. So let's suppose we want to take the elements in this collection and multiply them all together. So we'll initialize our product to one. Then we'll get an iterator of the integers in that collection. So notice here, we have an iterator object reference variable called vals. We assign that to the return value of calling the iterator method on my collection. My collection is of some type that implements iterator, so it has this iterator method that returns an iterator to us. Now that I have this iterator, I can use the hasNext method to determine is there anything left in this iterator. And so this while loop will continue as long as there's an element left that I haven't seen in that iterator. And then to get that next value, I call the next method on the iterator and multiply that times the existing product. Now, once this loop is done, once has next returns false, the loop exits and I can print out my product. So this is one way to use an iterable object. We're able to get an iterator out and then use that iterator. Now, another thing that we can do, if my collection implements iterator, then we can use a for loop to iterate through the elements. So let's suppose we wanna add up everything in the collection. So we'll initialize a sum to zero, and then we'll create a for loop where we say for integer ii in my collection. This will iterate through the collection, pulling off each integer one by one and giving us a reference to that integer. So then we can add those together and print our result. So now let's take a look at how we can use an iterable object in our code and work with the interfaces that those objects provide. Here I have a program where we have two array lists defined and then we fill those array lists with random numbers. Now you'll notice the amount of numbers we put in each array list is different. And then once we do that, we print them out. So let's take a look at that and you can see those here. Now array lists implement the iterable interface. So if I click on it and say, open declaration, you can see that array list implements list, which extends collection, which extends iterable. So eventually we get to it extends iterable. Now, if we go to the iterable declaration, the iterable interface has a function called iterator. And that function returns an iterator of whatever type we've stored in the collection. So in this case, it's an array list. So what we're doing will actually work for any Java API collection or any other class that implements the iterable interface. So let's suppose that I want to add these numbers together. Well, I can get an integer iterator from both of these lists. And now I can use this iterator to actually get the elements from the two iterators. Now I'm going to create two number objects and I'll also have a counter that I'll initialize to zero. So let's suppose that I want to grab the numbers and each pair of numbers in the two lists, I want to add them together. Well, they both have an iterator, and I could say, well, iterator one has next and iterator two has next. And this will be true when both of these iterators have another element left to pull out. And again, I want to do that because notice they have a different amount of numbers in each array list. So that iterator will have a different amount of numbers as well. So num1 is going to be iterator one next, num2 will be iterator two next. And then I'm going to print, and I'll double space just to give a little bit of indentation, but we'll say num1 plus num2 is equal to, and then num1 
plus num2. And I actually need to put num1 plus num2 in quotes so that it does that addition. If I didn't put that in quotes, since this is a string right here, it would try to do a string append, which is not what I want. So the parentheses there are important. And if you're curious what I mean, just try it without this set of parentheses and see what happens. I'm going to increment the counter. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I'm done, I'm going to say how many of these I printed out. And it looks like I misspelled this variable name. So I think that's the easiest way to fix it. So if I run this, notice it adds 30 numbers together. And again, even though ArrayList 1 had 40 numbers, since ArrayList 2 only had 30, we only ran this loop while both of them had another value in their iterator. And so again, when we created these iterators, we had 40 in one, 30 in the other. So this loop would iterate 30 times before iterator two would be empty. Now, one other thing, just in case you're wondering, the iterator itself doesn't change the lists. So if I run this again, you can see that the list contents have never changed. And that's what we would expect. The iterator isn't intended to pull things out of the list. It's intended to give us access to what's there so that we can go through without having to know anything about that underlying data structure. So that's a quick introduction to the iterable interface and objects that implement it.